Video styles. There are many types of educational video that are inexpensive to create but still look valuable. I will start with some examples for such styles, then talk about the relation between a video style and the internet learning, discuss some salient visual features, few aspects concerning production and learning, and finally point out that style does not always follow from the obvious function. The virtual blackboard with narration but without a talking head has been made popular by Salman Khan on YouTube. Let's draw a right triangle. Name the sides A, B and C and draw a square for each side. The Pythagorean theorem says that the area a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The standard alternative to Kahn's style is a screencast of slides plus narration plus a small talking head. If all you have is just a photograph, a diagram or a map, you can use the Ken Burns effect. The virtual camera pans across and zooms into the picture, slowly of course, to prevent motion sickness. If the focus is on a story rather than on formulas or bullet points, you may use the entire frame for a person, with or without accompanying text. A very lean way to create videos is to capture regular lectures. Possibly by filming a teacher in front of a blackboard. But Khan style and narrated slides can also be done in a live lecture. For metaphorical demonstrations, Lego bricks, putty and other props can be very helpful. If you want to show complex constructions, you can work in small incremental changes and record a single frame of the video after every such change. That's stop motion. In STEM subjects, you may also want to show real experiments, say with hockey pucks or with insects or bacteria. In particular for trailer videos, some MOOC makers reenact movies or impersonate celebrities. Note that some of these styles require a legal check. For instance, in a lecture recording, students may be visible. Some manufacturers of toys or of expensive products may use their trademark rights to limit how these can be shown in public. And copying the style of a movie may violate rights of the studio. When choosing a style, the first question to ask is of course what this video is good for. Do you want to demonstrate a procedure? Do you want to illustrate a theory in physics? Do you want to motivate the participants to endure an upcoming lengthy derivation? The objectives change from video to video and so will the optimum style. Creativity trumps production value, so have a camera or a smartphone at hand all of the time. For instance, during a vacation, you may have a chance of recording a video for a MOOC on dramaturgy while standing in the ruins of an antique theater. Khan style videos may look more attractive if the lecturer's writing hand is visible. The cheapest way to achieve this is to record both the hand and the writing on plain paper with a single camera. The hand in this video, though, is faked by computer graphics. For videos that show a person speaking, you may have to think about the background. No background at all, what I'm using here is best for visual clarity. 
If you use a green screen background, you can easily repurpose the video, for instance by replacing the background with the logo of a sponsor. You may want to film on location, for instance in a historic library. But better make sure beforehand that you have the necessary filming rights for doing so. I need to mention two important aspects concerning style, production and learning. First, I always find live recordings far quicker to produce and to edit. When I'm aware that I can redo a video, I tend to do so. This leads to a huge number of attempts and fragments. Second, empirical data suggests that users take fewer quizzes if the video before is longer than 6 minutes. So shorter videos seem to be more engaging. In addition, they should be easier to repurpose for other context. And it's less painful to discard one of them and reshoot it. There is the saying that form follows function. But you have to keep in mind that the term function can also refer to not so obvious aspects. One of these aspects may be to signal to the viewer that much care has been applied when creating the MOOC. So production value that is too low may backfire, even though the content and the didactics are perfect. Luckily, the audience is very forgiving these days concerning production value. Another tricky aspect of style is whether the rendition is rehearsed. Rehearsed narration may or may not sound boring. Improvised narration may sound authentic at best or unfocused at worst. Improvising complicated mathematical derivations in front of a live audience may even come across as bragging. <laughs>